Growing up as a person who attended a predominantly white church complicated my relationship with people of color. My religious heritage is one that told me that black people were equal in Christ, but everything else about how we actually lived our lives said otherwise. Consider that in my white church, I was told the following at different times in my life. I should not ever consider dating anyone outside of my race because A, the Bible forbids it, or B, even though the Bible doesn't forbid it, it is difficult to explain and navigate culturally. I heard black people described in terms of their conformity to white culture as they're really not black, while others that refused to conform were described as divisive and uncooperative. When we would bring children to the church from the black community, there were many voices that protested. They're disrespectful. They don't know how to act in God's house. They're taking away from our own kids. On occasion, I even heard that rap music has no place in the church. I even once had my cheesy Christian rap albums taken away by church leaders. What's disturbing is that I was often complicit in perpetuating these philosophies. For far too long, I supported church leaders that would often use the N-word and embrace these kinds of beliefs. The black community was condemned as culturally inferior to the white community and often identified as the reason for the crime and poverty in our Arkansas Delta town. I recall one conversation that I had with a black couple that was attending our church. The context was the Los Angeles riots after the acquittal of the police officers who beat Rodney King. I was talking about why are these black folks burning down and looting their own community. My friends who were from LA patiently endured my racist diatribe until my dear sister in Christ went off on me. You have no idea the rage and the anger of black people, she said, and she was right. I was put in my place quickly and to my dear sister, I'm sorry I caused you this pain. I was wrong. I was wrong for a long time. You were right. You were justified in your anger in response to my white arrogance and ignorance. I'm reminded of the words of Dr. King. First, I must confess that over the last few years, I've been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in the stride toward freedom is not white citizens council or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I can't agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically feels he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by the myth of time, and who constantly advises the Negro to wait until a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. In the midst of blatant injustices inflicted upon the Negro, I have watched white churches stand on the sideline and merely mouth pious irrelevancies. In the midst of a mighty struggle to rid our nation of racial and economic injustice, I have heard so many ministers say those are social issues with which the gospel has no real concern. And I have watched so many churches commit themselves to a completely other worldly religion. So here we are moving toward the exit of the 20th century with a religious community largely adjusted to the status quo, standing as a taillight behind other community agencies rather than a headlight leading men to higher levels of justice. Martin Luther King Jr. Letter from the Birmingham Jail, April 16th, 1963. When we learn better, we should do better. This is my attempt.